about a decade ago, I realized that if we were going to go to Mars with people, it would be really expensive. And so I thought to myself, what activities have human cultures engaged in in the past that were as expensive as what it might be to go to Mars? And what motivated them to spend that money? I was going to fill a whole book. Motivations to do great things, great expensive things. And then I'd find the, uh, the task, I'd find the activity that most, most closely resembled what it would be to go to Mars in the 21st century. I say, oh, is that what that culture did with their population? Is that how they raised the money? Is that how they convinced the people? I was going to fill a whole book of this. It would be a nice little reference catalog about how to get something done in modern times. In conducting that exercise, what I found is that there are only three drivers, not more, not less, three drivers that account for the most expensive, ambitious projects humans have ever undertaken. One of them is the praise of deity or royalty. That's what got you, got you the pyramids. They're basically expensive tombstones. That's what got the cathedral and church building of Europe. That was a period where huge fractions of, of societal investment went into those activities. There's less of that today, so that's not really a useful driver to think about how we might transform the 21st century. Another driver is war. Nobody wants to die. That gets you the Great Wall of China. That gets you the Manhattan Project, where we built the bomb. That gets you the Apollo Project. Another driver, the search for economic return. Nobody wants to die. Nobody wants to die poor. The search for economic return. That's what is responsible for the Columbus voyages, the Magellan voyages, Lewis and Clark, figuring out what is beyond that frontier in hugely expensive enterprises conducted by governments. So if we're going to go to Mars, and if war is not the driver, because you could, it could easily become the driver, if, if, if you get another space race with someone we view as a military adversary, wonder who that might be. But if peaceful heads prevail, then war is not the driver available to you. Let's check our list. Well, kings and gods are not sufficient in modern times to undergo heavy projects such as that. What's left? The promise of economic return. You can go into space, transform society, change the zeitgeist of your culture, turn everyone into people who embrace and value science, technology, engineering, and math, the STEM fields. Whether or not people go into space or serve the space industry, they will have the sensitivity to those fields necessary to stimulate unending innovation in the technology, in, in the technological fields, and it's that innovation in the 21st century that will drive tomorrow's economies. Any frontier in space now involves biologists, we're looking for life, chemists, geologists, physicists, mechanical engineering, electrical engineers, uh, uh, aerospace engineers, astrophysicists, all the traditional sciences and engineering frontiers are captured in any ambitious goal to explore space. We can recapture those times and reinvent America. We've already invented America once before. It's ripe. It's ready and it's willing, I think, to be invented again.